Now we're going to paint a large mouth bass. When you're preparing the body, you use a brush and caulk. And in the taxidermy process, you're going to get a lot of damaged fins. And what you do, you use caulk, you put on the fins, uh, get you a brush with the brush, maybe wet the caulk a little bit, do this with it, and it creates fin rays. And that's how you repair fins. You like bringing out some of the natural markings. Um, you can, especially on a largemouth bass with a tinning schedule, I will use um, a pencil. And you're bringing back out the marks or even, you know, cover up some damage a little bit. Um, that's what this is good for. But you can see I've got my markings all through there. And I'll darken those up later. Uh, did some of this, head work. Anything that's black on the fish before you paint it, go ahead and darken it back in. Yeah, usually there's the stripe pattern that goes through here. I mean, you can study the anatomy. It's, it's always essential. Um, but you got your black bar and pattern that's broken up right through here. And so I use my pencil lid for that. Then you got some more bars right above the lateral line. They go all the way up to the head. And a lot of times you can see that. If you can't see it, you may have to just make them in. Um, roughly maybe a diamond, star shape, somewhere in that. Something would look about like that. You can go through there and you can see some of the other markings up here in the back. Go ahead and darken those back in. And it'll have a real good effect later on as you're going to see. Not to mention this right here, um, all that stuff. Feel free to darken it in. Now I'm using a deer head stand, um, and my fish is connected to a stick, and then my stick is screwed into my deer head stand. But whichever works for you. Uh, later on, if I have to paint the gills, I've got a stick to hold my fish back by, and I can, you know, paint my gills by holding the stick however I need it. And so that's pretty much how I do that. My first color is going to be off-white. Oh, I forgot to mention, the first thing you do is seal the fish with a base coat sealer, a sand and sealer. Uh, the base coat sealer you get from uh, the taxidermy supply companies. It runs through your airbrush, dries real fast, so it's, got, it's convenient. Sand and sealer, you've got to wait a while. I have my base coat sealer. Now I want to make sure I seal my fish real good. It's a good platform for your paint to adhere to the fish real good. Make sure you get a good coating of it everywhere. Everywhere you're going to put paint inside the mouth. You can hold it in your hand by the stick. That's even easier. I've done that a lot. But for, for video purposes, this will do. And base coat sealer is good for giving the fish depth. You can use it between colors, and it seems to help a lot. Get inside the head area, the gills, everything. Anywhere you're going to put paint, the belly, everything. You got to rearrange your fish, whatever it takes. Okay, now I've got some off white. I'm going to paint the lower belly up to the bar, and we're going to paint all the fins white. A lot of people on the TD method don't. Don't hurt to thin it down if it needs it, but you may not need to thin it down. That's totally what it's up to you. Just bring over the button, let it bubble, and that mixes your paint up for you. Okay. Paint inside the mouth. I'll show you.
it doesn't bother me to go ahead and paint the grinders, uh, anything that a lot of people would paint, you can go ahead and uh, paint it because, uh, I mean, you're going to put the color back on it anyway. do this since I've got it this way. Harder in my lacquer thinner, and I can tell that it's swollen a lot more so you're laying down a lot better. They call it uh, it's called the harder. If you so desire, you can card this up here to keep the paint. Make sure paint from getting on it. Um, this gives you either a piece of cutout cardboard or something like that. To basically, what you're doing is you're So with the overspray to get on anything that you're just going to have to take off anyway. Um, it's not too important because the back is going to be dark anyway. The back gets dark. So you see that? You cover it good, you know. It doesn't have to be extremely solid body. I mean, you do have other colors going over. on this one. You can cut a little bit of a groove or you know, just be real careful with you know, your spray. And this is all down there going to get wide anyway. But I definitely don't want my body being sprayed wide if I can keep on it. But anything you can do can always be corrected, but it's more time because you have to go back and recorrect. I'm going to readjust the fish so I can get the belly. Some people leave this clear for a real good effect curl it up real good and then put yellow on it and it has a kind of a, a transparent look and a lot of people like that but I'm just going to go ahead and paint it white. this under here everything is wide underneath and it's kind of like it grows up on the side before it eventually stops so everything underneath is wide
good idea to go ahead and paint the gills white also. Some people use aerosol cans that are lacquer based and it cuts down on having to put more paint in your airbrush. I've seen people do that, especially on your bigger fish like rockfish. I've seen them do that technique and I've done it as well. Now this is uh, just regular medium ground lacquer thinner. You've got a Walmart and then I've got the retarder thinner, the lacquer uh, retarder that you can get like at Sherwin Williams or, and other places and any paint store and I've got like maybe I guess about a probably about at least one fourth about one fourth to the rest of it being like within there but it depends on your warmth and everything but it's really good so far on me and I still may be using more than most people I'm just Going by trial and error and what, what works and what seems to be laying down the paint the best for me. So. All this in here, the gills on that side needs to be white. All that needs to be white. The gills, everything underneath, inside the mouth. And I want to turn the fish straight again to let you see my, some of the final uh, phase of it. A lot of people hold it, hold it in their hands by the stick, and they have a lot more control. But for video purposes, I'm not going to. And I'm going to show you kind of where the paint needs to stop. Inside the mouth has been painted white. The gills on the inside. And now I've got the fish straight again. The belly's already been white. Um, now I'm going to show you, you know, those parts where I stopped uh, with the white. But all this gets whitened. I'm try to stay out of the way. A lot of your old mounts, you, you can see on your old mounts, a lot of times you see stuff that's uh, fading through, and it's usually in these junction areas. So a lot of times I'll add a little extra paint there just to kind of help cover up for a more extended period of time. And when you lay this wine on here, the pearls going over it is going to really have a good effect. I kind of did that. I go ahead and make sure I get my heels. 
Uh, to get your gills, it's really best to just hold it by the stick and turn the fish however you get it. And if you can see it with your eye, you should be able to fix your gills. But I do not come out of here, I don't go past the collar now with the white. I stay inside of it in this area. If you got to turn the fish to get your gills, turn your fish. All this down through here is good and white. Um, if you got some marks that you put on with a pencil, you may not want to go completely white. I mean, you don't want to cover them up completely, but uh, you definitely want it to grow up to the side, that's for sure. And this stripe pattern, that's kind of like your stopping point. You know, roughly, you don't want it to look like a, you know, corner of a table edge. You don't want it to look that sharp, but... I'm going good and white, but not so white that I'm covering up my pencil marks where I can't see them for later reference. Some people say of a dark fish, they did tend to go up in here and lighten everything up. Uh, it's because you know, they painted fish so many times that they remember all the where the horrible marks go anyway, and they may want to just go ahead and lighten their fish up a little bit. So there's different frames of thought on that. But it just whatever works best for you. My main thing is covering up the dead look. That's, that's all I'm more concerned about. And that's it for the white. Now we're going to go to white pearl. Okay, now I've got white pearl. I'm going to go over everything, and I'm going over in white. That includes the fins, pretty much everything. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but it's really purple and everything a little bit. Auxiliary right here. Looks good with a little chrome uh, pearl on it. Oh, it really looks good. That pearl look. I'll leave it up to you that if you want to put it inside the mouth. Most people don't. I'm going to rearrange it and get the belly. I went ahead and unscrewed my fish just uh, so I can get it to fish better. And it's not wrong. You can do this. Basically, you're going over everything that you went over with with white. That's what you're going over with your pearls. 
really looks good to have a good pearly fish or you know the belly it makes a difference i've seen it on the fish you can see this pearl on them so it's not wrong to put it See all that good pearl, you can see it. I may pan in so you can see it a little bit better. Not sure if you can see it real good, but you can see where I pearled it real good. And I'm kind of figured it'd be good to let you kind of study where all, I put all the white and then went over it with the pearl, where I carried it up on the gills and didn't go up into the cheek necessarily. And the belly as well, you can kind of see um, the pearl and the white. Uh, you can see kind of where I went up and stopped. Not completely abruptly, but I didn't really go much past the uh, the stripe pattern. But I figured it'd be good to kind of let you look at it and study it for a second. Okay, now I've got bright yellow and I'm gonna go over all the fins and uh, show you what we do after we do that. Pearl looks really good on a fish. You know, in, in places where there's a little bit of bone and stuff. Um, but now I've got the uh, bright yellow. And uh, I'm go ahead and just put a good coating over the pins. You don't want to completely cover up the pearl, but you want to. definitely be able to see it. I learned it. I just go ahead and put it on because I know I can always cover it up later. And some of the bass now, um, you, you can actually see them that way. Um, they'll have like pretty much a dark, dark paints gray color on their fins. And not much yellow shows too, so it, it just depends on I mean, you're probably a little bit to do with it. Water probably has a little to do with it. Everything depends. That all has an effect on the color of your particular fish that you're going to paint. So, just keep that in mind. That's clean for that. I'm also going to go over yellow on the back, so I'm not going to worry about a little bit of overspray right now. Off of the yellow, you know, like maybe you know, just shy of the where it connects to the, the body. That's a, that's a good effect. You can see how it's a little bit white, and you can always put that back in if you want to with the white. So everything you do, uh, you can pretty much go back and fix later. Don't want the yellow to get on the belly here, so here again. The yellow on top of the pearl looks really neat. 
myself. So you can see how I did everything. Start putting a little bit of yellow on top of the head. Let me show you. Okay, I've also got my yellow. And you can go ahead and I forgot to get this, but you can do a little bit. You can kind of put it along the maxillary, just kind of bring the color in, I guess is the right word. So bring this in a little bit right here. Tell it's growing on there a little bit. You don't want to get too carried away with it. Go ahead and get from the front a little bit. Let your overspray hit the back of the, well it hits the front of the maxillary, your overspray, and the rest of it hits the front of your lip. Stuff. And when the yellow gets on top of this brown, you can see a little bit of a lime green come through, which is a mean effect also. But now after you go around the eyes and all that right in here. I tend to go right through here and up into there. That's the way I do it. Now with my bright yellow, I kind of like... I like it to go on the back fairly good. So I went ahead and adjusted it, but... Now you want a rearward angle because that's the way it hits the scale different that way. And it comes in real important when on the belly area. And I'll show you that here in a minute. But the good thing about these deer head stands, see I can turn the fish however I want it, just like I was doing mountain deer head. Um, same thing with taking the fish. It's pretty versatile. Okay, now I'm going to start animal spraying down on the side. What it does, it touches the scales in a certain way. Uh, most of the paint is going to go into the air, but you want just a little bit of the paint to glance off the scales and give it a certain uh, detail effect. Uh, they, uh, it's 
you know, it's kind of like highlighting thin rays or angle spraying, that's what it does. It just it brings out it just brings out the good effects. So just keep that in mind and uh, I'll get some pictures to show you how to do it. I'm shooting from an extreme rear and uh, you can see when it hits uh, the yellow it's it's hitting the scales different. You can just sit there and glance it like this and let a lot of the paint is just blowing out this way. But what is catching the scales is leaving a neat effect. And so I'm just doing it like this. From an extreme rear angle, and it even helps. Sometimes you can angle spray so much from the top that it affects your fish when your fish is level. It looks good when it's a certain way, but when it's level, it's like you can't see it. The paint didn't hit the scales exactly right, in other words. So extreme frontal and extreme rear, rear uh, is important for a good looking fish. Uh, not just from the back, but the back is important too. And you can see it grow on the, on the belly scales too, because the yellow is hitting just the back of the scale. You know, it's not the whole whole fish it's, it's because it's from, it's from an angle. And you want to be slightly careful because you know you're, you do have a bowl. You know, paint can splatter out and, and do some damage in other words. So you can see how I'm going from a rear. And that's important. You know, also from the top, but also from the extreme rear angle, can really make a difference. Now what it does, there's like a natural row of, of scales that pop up from using the yellow. I'll show you what it is. It doesn't hurt to go up on your pressure, and because they, you know, it gets your job done a lot faster. So you can go up on your pressure a little bit. But I'm sitting at about right, about 32 pounds of pressure. But I could go up. Uh, you know, like when you're doing uh, large uh, spraying applications, it doesn't hurt to, uh, you know, boost up the air pressure a little bit. Get your paint going where it needs to go a lot faster. But uh, you'll know when, when that time, kind of when and where, you'll know when that's important. Now the green cone that the yellow leaf, that's a pretty good effect too. And even if you have to go back and correct some of this stuff, it's Basically, you want the yellow to do what it's supposed to do, and that may be the mechanics of it more than anything. But, you know, you can always recorrect and go back and repaint if you have to. You know, maybe a, a medium to a, a about a medium coat of the bright yellow. Leaning towards a lot. You just want to give it a yellow look, but you don't want to go much further than that. Okay, you can sort of see that I'm a uh, from an extreme rear angle, and I pretty much got enough. But I'm just wanting to make sure I hit the very back of the the scale. That's from an upward angle, but at the same time, from the extreme rear angle. And the scales that are clear, it brings them out. And it, it's a, you just have that better effect. Now 
now. I'm not sure if you can see it, but you know how you can see rows of scales that the shadows are putting on the fish? You can see like little, kind of like rows. Well, when I rear, rear angle sprayed with the yellow, uh, you can see rows of yellow. yellow. So basically it's hitting the top to mid section of the scales that are making the shady rows. So I'm, I'm hitting the same scales, but it's in the, like the mid section, the highest part of the scale. And but you, it's probably hard to see. Now I've got medium green, and I'm going to go ahead and put a light coat over the spiny dorsal, soft dorsal, and tail. Now this color is going to be used on the back. You can already see a green kind of effect just from the heavy, intense yellow that I put on the back. So this is a not a bad color to use kind of sparingly, I guess, uh, but it looks better than yeah. If you paint a fish and don't use medium green, it doesn't look all that hot. So, yeah, it's definitely got its place. There again, you just want it to grow on there. a little bit on the, the bottom, but a lot wider. Now I'm going to do the back. And here's where you cover up some of your, uh, you know, your head work when you're mounting the fish. Um, namely the caulk that you may have used to put in your eye. starting to bleed in already. And even like the max here, you just, just off the yellow a little bit. Don't kill the yellow out, just kind of off it a little bit. And you remember medium green is a really good color for a bass, so it's good to use. hit the front of your maxillary and let it grow on there. Now I'm ready to start spraying from an upward angle along the back. Now you don't want to kill out your yellow because that defeats the purpose of putting it on there. But you definitely want that green to carry down from the back and fade out before you take out all the yellow. I'll show you what I mean. From a front, frontal angle, uh, not so much from a rear, like I did the yellow. I'm going to go just along the back. It's a nice color, but with mean, your detail, you know, the, the spotting and all that has got to be black. The top of the back is always black. So. 
been in mind. I'll make it the first couple of sweeps. Grab along the back. I don't want to completely kill out my marks if I can keep from it. But I do want a good looking green fish. So there's the paradox. But now you angle spray. from a frontal angle, an extreme frontal, and an upward angle. Extreme frontal, and just let a little bit of it, let the edge of your spray hit the scale just to highlight it. It's not so important on the medium green as it is your last color, which is the black green, but still, I like to do it. It starts bringing out some of the belly scale patterns a little bit. But you want this color to fade out just a little past the lateral line. You don't want to completely fade out the yellow, especially right in here. And it kind of looks good. You know, maybe a little bit of a green, yellow-green color is fine, but you don't want to completely kill it out. This overspray stuff we can clean up. So don't let that fresh in on it. Okay, now we're going to do our next color. It is black. Okay, um, that's not a bad idea. Go ahead and clean your eye off once um, before you put your final dark coating on there. So you want to have like a white ring around your eye. Um, it's not as bad on the tinny method, but especially if you paint your fish solid white first. Uh, you want to keep the eye kind of clean until you proceed, until you get to where you're going to put your darkest color. And uh, that way you don't have a white ring around your eye when you're finally done. And wonder how you're going to take care of that white ring around your eye. And pretty much just get lacquer and squirt some on the end of a Q-tip, maybe one time, so it's not going to drip. It's it's amazingly hard to get rid of a drip down the side of a fish. I mean, it's amazingly how complicated it can be to get rid of something like that when it it can mess your fish up, kind of. It's hard to correct. So basically, just clean that off like this. far down as you can and if you have to get an exacto knife and scrape off scrape off around the uh, I've had to do that several times 
It makes a difference in the quality of your mouth. Okay, now I've got my light again. A lot of people don't even do it and worry about it, but you know, I, I've got yellow overspray in areas that I wanted real white and pearly. So to me, it's worth it to go back. And wipe that stuff up, and maybe even throw a little bit more foam on there. Because our last coat is the defining coat anyway, is what makes the fish pretty much. So I just wanna guess what I'm getting at is the overspray. I mean the angle spraying has its advantages, but also has its disadvantages. If you notice like on a trout or something, a lot of times we paint a little bit of white in the grooves, you know, the grooves and the gills. It's sort of the same effect with a bass, you know. When his mouth is shut, you don't see all that stuff. When he opens his mouth, what's underneath, this right here is all, all white. So it's not wrong to incorporate that back in. And when I angle spray that, I hit the pins. You can't see them from your angle, but from the upward angle, I see green. So I take the time to go ahead and fix that back. You know, it's a small price to pay for the effect that angle spring gives you. So that's what I do. And even on the very bottom of the belly, you don't want to kill out the effect. You want a little bit of spray going down there. You know, it looks good with high contrast, but it's not. It's not always realistic to have a real bright fish below the stripe. So I do let some of the paint come down from from the top when I angle spray, as you can tell. You may not be able to tell right now, but if there's any belly areas that you want to touch up, um, that maybe you got a little bit of spray on. Now the time to do it. I like a little bit of white extending out on this bottom pin, uh, on the anal pin. I like that pretty good. And basically, just anything, clean up anything that needs to be corrected. I got a little bit of white curly in, and nothing says you can't go ahead and re-pearl what you had to repaint white just to bring that good pearl back. See that good pearl color coming back? Everywhere I had to do my touch up, throw a little bit more pearl back on that. It's not the final coat anymore. But now we're going to go to our Defining color, which is the light green, is what we put our details in, what we cover our back up with, and what we shade our fins with. It's all one color. And uh, we'll do that here in just a second. There's a couple of things I tend to do a little bit different than a lot of people. Um, I'd say the yellow, for instance. Uh, most paint schedules call for uh, a lot missing the yellow down, down, to, you know, down this midsection. Uh, fading out before you get to the belly and like super, you know, just kind of a light yellow color. Well, I'll let my angle spray in with the yellow hit the scales in a way that you can still see the yellow and it's on there pretty good. I'm sure you, it doesn't look like you can see it, but there is there is yellow all through here where it's, you know, where I angle sprayed from the back and let the, the over spray hit the scales. And a lot of times I'll let that go. Sometimes I see that on a bass, it looks really good. Um, you know, a lot of times I don't see much yellow. Sometimes I do. Depends on the fish. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know how it is. You catch different fish with strikingly different colors in the same body of water. But uh, it's not wrong to go ahead and put a lot of misty yellow down through there. You know, across the midsection. 
and up to the back and pretty much end up looking almost like what I've got right there. Okay, now I've got black green. This is what I'm going to make all the details with. And I make the details first. And uh, it helps if it's not a lot of moisture in the air because, you know, that kind of affects your it's black green and it's, it's been down with uh, black retiner and retarder and basically I just darken back up what I already see. You know what I darken it with my pencil lead? I just darken it back up. And I'll try not to get in the way too much, but excuse me if I do. basically just see how that goes. A lot of times you can't see the facial markings really good. Um, I tend to get a little bit stylized with it. It's probably not the right thing to do. But plenty of reference material always helps. You can't go wrong when you use uh, Mother Nature as your guide. No. I'm going to paint it so you can see it a little better. There's certain places down here that Anything that was black before, just go ahead and put it back in. in some more of these details and I'll show you. And I'm going to do a little bit of lip work, so I readjusted the camera. Again, this is my black green. My final color for, you know, the main final color. There again, upward angle, let the angle spray hit the, back, the front of the maxillary. Kind of like in this groove right here. That's what it's hitting. Put the details on first. 
it gives you a better idea how much to ammo spray when you're when you're doing your back and you're when you're darkening your fins up and all that, you know, your final shading. It helps already have your details in because it gives you a better idea of how much to shade. You know, so the details just don't stick out so much. Uh, so that's my that's my thought behind it. But you know, always just try to make them look as realistic as possible. That's about all we can do. start right along this middle stripe and if you're afraid you're going to get a lot of water later I have one ahead to put these bottom marks in it first but very good way to get the stripe so what we're going to do is adjust your airbrush Now there's anatomical things that go along with the, you know, with the stripe pattern. Sometimes it'll go down so far and the stripe pattern will actually stop about right here. Uh, but every bass is different. I've seen it where it looks like a big old, just a big stripe. And so every bass is different. They have a different barring pattern. And basically I'm going back over what I drew in and I was happy with what I drew in so I can't look too bad. You're also going to get a lot of fish that are damaged. If you were living caught in the tournament before, flopped around in somebody's boat, put them in a gar, tried to get a hold of them or something. But a lot of times the scales, you'll see places where missing scales are. Sometimes that's an ideal spot for a dark spot if it works out. So just keep that in mind as well. But I'll go ahead and do this pattern. You know, pretty intensely, you know, good, nice, and dark. Uh, although every fish is different, but that's what I'm doing. But I'll go ahead and get that spotted pattern back in, and we'll let you see what it looks like. Yeah, right here by the lantern line, <clears throat> there's like a row of, they could be diamond shaped, but not always. It could be more like a star shape or something like that, but I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Right here by the lantern line, and sometimes it's like the mark continues below the lateral line a little bit. So every time, every, everywhere you see them, especially on spotted bass, right below where you see a little bit of the, uh, the spotting pattern below the lateral line, it's like it separates above the ladder line and starts again. I've seen that quite a bit.
kind of see the effect that I'm trying to get right in here. So now both the lateral lines, you know, they can be big spots. They can be a streak that's, you know, a couple of scales long. Um, so a good reference is a must. But if you can see the marks in your original fish and darken them in and reuse those marks, it's going to be their fish. So that helps awesome. But just want you to see that. Now there's some individual marks. You probably can't see them now. But it's where I drew them in with a pencil lid. And all I'm going to do is darken them back up. Some of them are more than just like maybe a spot. But some of them are like big, big blotch. So it's whatever the fish shows. But sometimes you can't do it. Sometimes the spots disappear completely. But helps have good reference so you can put them in if you can't see them. Now with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and finish putting the spots on and then we're going to angle spray from the back. You know, to bring out, highlight the scales, bring out the scales. Okay, this is what I got so far. Uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and angle spray the fins and uh, when I paint from the back and let my black green angle spray, when I let it go down on the belly, it's going to give me a better idea where to, you know, darken up my belly marks, you know, that I have, haven't put on yet. The angle spray will give me an idea where to put them a lot better. So I tend to do that. You know, everything adds for, you know, for a better natural effect. But now I'm going to go ahead and highlight the fins and I'll show you how I'll do that. goal with this black green is to try to blend these marks in by darkening the back but I still want it to look realistic and I've did, uh, the black green does bring it out um, but I'm going to show you how to angle spray the pen you get from an extreme frontal angle just let the paint right on there And you'll get a feel, you'll know when the paint's going on right. And then you know, do your soft door form the same way. And you do your a lot of times I can just angle spray from one side. But you can and it'll spray from the other side. You know, one way and then the other way. And you do your tail the same way. Uh, what you're doing, you're just bringing out the paint is hitting against the grooves or what's sticking out. And that's what you highlight your fins with. And I'm going to show you how to do the other fins. If we're using paint grid spray on the fins and the back, coming out real good results. And I see it, but 
I'm just sticking with the method that that I learned and had a lot of repeat customers with it, so I'm happy with it. So you basically just hit the pin right from an angle. It's all, not only is it darkening the fin, but it's bringing out the rays, which is what you want. Now we're going to do the other fin. This fin, um, I had to turn the fish a certain way. Here again, we got a piece of cardboard. We'll put it in a way where, well, a little bit more careful. Okay. I just want to put it in a way that, uh, doesn't affect my fish, you know. See how the tank just grows on there? Fins get it too. And it don't take much, just 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 enough to bring the details out. From extreme from length. Same with the other one. in the same way. You can see that. Just enough to bring out the details. You'll get a good idea about what you want. Since I got the fish this way, I'll go ahead and get the lower jaw. Kind of hit it from an angle and let some of the spray reach back and hit the upper lip line there a little bit. And the lower jaw a little bit. Both sides. From underneath. That's how you do it. Okay, now comes the main defining part of the fish. 
We're going to angle spray from the back. I got to go ahead and just my airbrush and I'll get back with it. Okay, now we're angle spraying. From not only from the back, but an extreme frontal angle, which I'll do a little bit later. I'm gonna start going straight down the back. And uh, you know you want marks on the other side too. It's Good to spend the time to go ahead and put the marks on the other side as well. That's just for future reference. Stream from the landing. Go ahead and adjust my airbrush for high volume output. Start on the back, very top of the back. The back is always the darkest part. And I'm going to angle spray from the top, well, from the frontal angle. And I want it to carry down even into the white because it gives me an idea where to put my spots a little better. And even how, how thin or how thick to make. So right now I'm hitting from the back. But I also want to hit from the front, which means I'll have to turn my fish a little bit more. Ah, about right there. And it, it, it brings out the, I'm just, the most extreme angle that I can hit them is what I'm trying to do. Extreme frontal is the best effect. But also for the you know the screen frontal and also frontal and from the back. So that's your two that's your two options right there. Now the paint, the way it's hitting, it looks almost like somebody got pencil lead and drew where I need to put my spots. Of course I know better than that. And you do the other side of the same. And let me readjust the fish. Now let your reference be your guide on how uh, dark you want to make your fish. Tinny method fish tend to be darker anyway because you're painting over what was dead. So that's just something to think about too. Although when you do a reproduction, you basically, if you make the fish look like the fish did before you put a paint job on it, you can paint a reproduction you know, make it that gray brown look and then start doing a teeny method on it and turn it into an awesome looking fish. I've done that with walleye and bass and uh, other fish as well. That's something to think about. You can paint a reproduction. You just want to make the fish look uh, dead first. And then paint it like you would do a skin mount. That's all you gotta do.
I'm going to make a few more passes, and then I'm calling it as far as the angle spread. Um, but I figured I'd give it a shot and try to go from an extreme frontal angle as much as possible. I've already got the fish relatively dark. sweeps on the back and I'm done. Okay, just, just to have a good designated darkest part of the fish, which would be the back, I'm going to make a couple more sweeps along the back. The darkest part. And I even let some of the darkness co come up on the bottom of the fins even. I mean, that way at least you know you're going all the way to your back. Then carry it down just a little bit more. Designated dark spot of your fish. Almost too dark, but okay. Now you just color to, you know, where you've carted the back of your fins. Go ahead and use this to paint and do your detail on the back of your fish. You know. Then what we do is it's kind of like outlining the fins, but I did it on a lot of my other videos, my older videos. But it's basically where you make a rotation with your airbrush, let most of the spray go behind, you know, what you're trying to hit. And let some of the spray come down between these spines and darken the outer extremity of your fins. I do all my fins that way on my large mouth. And my small mouth and many other fish. All my bluegill. So you kind of adjust your spray to where you kind of want it. And you just start so that's done and you may feel like you gotta bring it back in a little bit which is all right and to do the same as if you just if you're wanting to hit the outer extremity And then tone it in. You may have to angle spray your fin a little bit more. Whatever you got to do to bring that, you know, that color back in a little bit better. Let it grow in there. And you get the idea. Now, a lot of people don't even do the bottom ones, but I do. You just let it, the lower front third is about the right way to do it. I, I guess that's a good way to say it. And you just kind of blend it in, you know, whether it's natural, and do the other one the same way. It's always taking the front third of the front spine, I guess is the right word. But I think you get what I'm doing. Now. Okay. 
same with the anal. You just want it to grow on the very end. You look as natural as possible. There you are. Now we do the tail the same way. I've got my handy airbrush here. I just want to kind of come in. I want to phase in. I don't want to like come in super abrupt. No one. And uh, I tend to use a circular motion. It seems like I can get a better feel for it that way. But whatever works best for you. And then of course I kind of bring it in a little better. I tone it in. So I guess that's the right word. And you know where it looks more natural. You probably can't see it, but, or you can't see it well, let me rephrase that. But I can actually see where I'm going to put my, you know, the traditional belly markings below the stripe that bass all tend to have. Where I angle sprayed, you can actually see it. I mean, I mean, you can actually see where I got to put them. I've got my last color, or my last details with the black green that I've got to do. So, I'm going to get my paint, kind of up the pressure a little bit, and thin it down where it's going to be thin lines. And basically, I know where I need to put my spots. Basically, from my overspray. But, folks, have a hand rest if you can. Now, the yellow that we sprayed from the back is on the left side of that black stripe that I'm putting. So it's a good effect, in other words. continue with that and I'll show you what I come up with. 
Well, this is what I got for the spotting below the strap. But I'll show you what we do next. Okay, now I've got gill red. These are lacquer based paints, but you can get the uh, the water based, the equivalent with the water based paints. I just got gill red. And I'm going to give a little bit of a, a reddish color to the fins. They look good. They look good on small mouth. They also look good on large mouth. I don't want to get too extreme with it, but we'll uh, just add a little bit. And uh, put a little bit of lacquer in there in the bowl. Plays down pretty good. And I also use this on the gills. And I'm going to go ahead and touch the body up for a minute. And don't take much. Uh, about that much. technique that I've I started using and I've been sticking with it all these years and it is uh, ooh, a lot of water in there. I just kind of go with the rays kind of bring it in like that <clears throat> and same down here you just want to off the yellow a little bit And it looks like I got a little bit of overspray of the red under there, but we can just go back with a while a little bit later. Or it actually has kind of a fleshy look. Now there's also a little... About like that. A lot of times I'll put a little bit of red right there. Between the anal and the tail and the white part underneath. <clears throat> and also these fins, they get a little bit of just off the yellow a little bit. You see this, especially in the spring, a lot of those bass, they got that real orange looking. Pelvic pins. So there's a little marker right here that I tend to redden up. I'll just give a little bit of a little bit of a about like that. I guess somebody wanted they could put a little bit on the jaw or something. Now some of this overspray I'm going to fix back up. For this pen it's the same thing. That red goes on top of that yellow and makes a different color. And that's the color you want to try to bring out. There we are. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and paint the gills. What I do, uh, you get some paper towels or whatever else you got. You stick it in there, that way the overspray doesn't mess up the inside of your mouth. It stays basically on the gills, has a nice look. And now you paint your gills. And you go in from an angle like this. Basically, it's really almost easier to hold the stick by hand, which is what I usually do. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. Basically, if you can see it with your eye, you should be able to get your red paint on it.
Now where the where the last heel touches the side of the fish's body, you want that good and smooth looking. So I'll tend to See how it's flush against the body? I just try to make it look good. And basically, hold the fish however you got to get to it to get those gills painted. And try to control your control your paint where it's not too strong. And, and then hopefully you'll do a good job with it. See it, if you can see it with your eye, you should be able to get your paint on it. Want to do a good job under here. I mean, it's not a time to skimp, you know what I mean? I mean, you've made it this far. You see what it looks like from this angle? And good. I mean, you do the same thing to the other side. You get those gears. There you are, good painted gills. Now we just take the paper towel out. Or napkins or tissue, paper bag, plastic bags, whatever you had to use. Hey, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it off again, you know, get it one more good time before you gloss over it. So that's much easier now as as opposed to if it had like three or four coats of it different color paint over it so what you're after right there yep just a good clean eye okay now you basically lost the fish for to get some of the glare off of it so you could get a better idea of what you're looking at and you know they got they got lots of spray on gloss they've got They've got a lot of different stuff out there. But you want to go over it first time just to kind of set the paint. You don't, you don't want to go on too thick in other words. Now you can use base coat sealer to, you know, in between uh, you know, in between uh, paint applications and a lot of times it kind of gives the fish a lot more uh, more depth. You know, if you use base coat sealer between coats, I've done that before too. So keep that in mind. Make sure you get the other side too. But this is how I paint a largemouth bass.